Hello everybody, I hope that you are well. Now, I have made a fair few mistakes in my travels over the years, but I'm always so grateful when I make these mistakes because I always learn something from it. So today, learning from my mistakes, I have compiled a list of 11 practical things to remember before you travel anywhere. So if you have a trip coming up, get ready to write this down as your checklist because these are 11 things that you're definitely not going to want to forget. So the first thing is to make sure that your phone is unlocked. This is something that you're going to be wanting to think about at least a week or two before you leave because sometimes it can take a bit of time. If you have just bought your phone as it is and it's not connected to any network, you won't have a problem here, your phone should already be unlocked. However, if you have bought your phone as part of a network contract, the most likely thing is is that your phone is locked to that network, which means that when you arrive in a new country and you may want to get a local SIM card, which I always recommend doing, you may not be able to do this if you have not unlocked your phone because your phone will not be compatible compatible with this new network. So you can unlock your phone by calling up your network or taking it to a phone shop or there are various ways that you can actually do it by yourself online. It does cost a bit of money and it can take a little bit of time but it is something that is really worth considering especially if you think that getting a local SIM card is something that you're going to want to do on your travels. Number two is to download your destination offline on Google Maps or whatever maps system you use. This is so when you arrive in the country, let's say you haven't got your local SIM card yet so you don't have access to data, but you can still make your way to your accommodation, you can still find your way around using the maps on your phone, but you don't need access to data to do this. So it can be so useful. I always make sure I've downloaded my destination offline so that when I get in the taxi or the bus, when I first leave the airport, I can see exactly where we're going, make sure we're going in the right direction to the hostel or accommodation. It just really makes me feel at ease and grounded knowing that I know where we're going and I can follow it. So if you don't know how to do this, it's really, really simple. I use Google Maps, but there are other equivalents. So my next backpacking destination is Bogota in Colombia. I could download the whole of Colombia, but it's absolutely huge. So on this occasion, I'm just going to be downloading Bogota. So what I do is we go on the side here, we go to offline maps, select your own map, Obviously Bogota is already there. And then I'm gonna press download. That it is downloading. And I can even rename that if I want. I can rename it to Bogota. Save. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi right now. So you're gonna to wanna to do this preferably when you are connected to a Wi-Fi. And there we go, Bogota is downloaded. So it means that when I arrive in Bogota, I'm gonna know where I'm going and I'm just gonna feel a lot better. Number three is to get out some local cash of your destination before you get there if you can. I know this might sound obvious to some people, but this is something that I stopped doing quite a while ago because I was having success every single time by arriving in the local airport, getting some money out of the ATM and going from there. However, as many of you saw, when I arrived in Manila, Manila, Philippines for the very first time. My bank card was not compatible with a single one of the ATMs at the airport and I didn't have any local cash on me and so I was in a little bit of a pickle. And yes, it's rare that your card will not work at any of the ATMs but clearly it's still very much a possibility so if you want to be on the safe side make sure you always have a bit of the local currency with you before you arrive in your destination. You don't need too much but maybe a hundred pounds worth, a hundred dollars worth, enough to get you to your accommodation and through your first day or two. And going on from that point, number four is to bring several bank cards with you. Again, for the reason of if your bank card doesn't happen to work in any of the ATMs. I highly, highly recommend getting a travel cash card if you don't have one already, or signing up to a virtual bank. So I'm talking Monzo, Revolut, N26, Starling. There are so many out there now which you can sign up for, get a free card, and it's the best way to carry money when you travel. And even better than that, another step up, you can sign up to get a free Curve card. Now a Curve card is not a bank, this is my Curve card, but what a Curve card does, so when you order the card, you also download the app. And what you could do is input all of your other cards onto this one card via the app and what it means is that when you're out and about traveling you only need to bring this one card with you because then using your app you can switch out which bank account you want to take the money from. You get the best exchange rates by using the Curve card, you can use it as contactless, you can get money out of an ATM, you can keep track of your spending and of which cards that they're coming from and the best part of all when you sign up to get a Curve card using my code BANAN or using the link in the description you get a free £5. That's right, a free five pounds because it's free to order the card, it's free for the card to get delivered, free to install the app, and once you make your first transaction using the card, 
Curve will literally give you five pounds and they will also give me a little bit of commission, which is lovely. It's a win-win situation all round. Number five is to make sure that you have travel insurance for wherever you are going. You never know when something's gonna go wrong. And even if you think that you're super safe, you're not clumsy, more often than not, when you need travel insurance, it's for something that wasn't actually your fault. You never know when you're gonna get injured, when something's gonna be stolen, and when you don't have travel insurance, this is gonna cost you an awful lot of money. Now, I personally am insured because of my Curve card. I have the Metal membership, but there are so many insurers out there to choose from. It can be really hard deciding which is best for you. I always recommend World Nomads for backpackers because it's one that you can update along your trip and it's made for backpackers. But if you're just going on a shorter holiday, I recommend going on something like comparethemarket.com where you can type in all your details of your trip and it will give you a list of all the different insurers that you can go with, how much they cost, what they provide, and you can choose which one is best specifically for you. Number six is to make sure that you are vaccinated correctly for your destination. So it may be that you don't need any vaccinations, but it's really worth checking with your travel health clinic if you're not sure, or just having a look online, type the destination that you're going to and the vaccinations that you require, then make sure that you personally are up to date because there are some destinations where there's a risk of hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Many of us have already been vaccinated for them, so you may not need to be re-vaccinated if that makes sense. But it's definitely, definitely worth checking. There are even some destinations, I know specifically in Africa, where it actually requires you to have vaccinations. So do just make sure you check that. And if you may need any malaria tablets, this is actually something that you're gonna to want to do as far in advance as possible actually before your trip, because there are some vaccinations, jabs, like the rabies jab, for example, where you need to get a few done over a period of time. So as soon as you know you're going on a trip, check what vaccinations you need, if any, and protect yourself against the dangers. Number seven. Okay, the next four tips are gonna be specifically if you're gonna be catching a flight to your destination. So number seven, make sure that you hydrate very well the day of your flight. Flights can be very, very dehydrating with the air conditioning that's going on. So try to drink as much water, fluids before you get on the plane. Maybe not when you're at the airport because when you drink at the airport, then you're probably gonna need a wee on the flight. But I'm talking like several hours before you get on the plane, drink lots of water. Flights can be fantastic places to pick up other people's Germ. So if we can build up our immunity as best as possible, that would be great. So drinking lots of water, eating the right foods is really gonna help you out here. Now number eight is something that a lot of you may think is obvious, but it's something that people forget every single day at the airport. And that is make sure when you're getting on the flight that in your hand luggage, none of your liquids are over a hundred mil. This water bottle, for example, is one liter. If I had this filled up to the top, mm -mm, I wouldn't be allowed to take it with me. And often they say to you, you gotta drink it all now, you gotta throw the whole thing away. They don't often give you an opportunity just to empty it out. And that can be really sad if it's something like your favorite water bottle which you've just forgotten to empty. But it goes the same for your toiletries. Just have a look on all of them, see how much they are. So this is my face fake tan which I bring everywhere and it's 75 mil, so this is good to come with me on the plane. This is my moisturizer, it's 100 mil, perfect, but nothing more than this. This is my body spray which is 200 milliliters, so I would not be able to bring this with me in my hand like a on the flight. I would, however, be able to put it in my checked-in luggage if I wanted to. If you're going on a trip where you don't have a checked-in bag, you have hand luggage only, but you've got to bring shampoo and conditioner and things like this, you can either get travel size versions of these bottles, but what I like to do is bring these squeezy bottles. These are from a brand called Go Travel. I love them. They're 100 milliliters each. And what I can do is dispense my shampoo, my conditioner, my shower gel into these, and they are perfect for bringing on flights. In different shops, you can get these in all different shapes and sizes. So I have a smaller one here, which I normally put my face wash in. Number nine is to make sure that you've weighed your bags before you leave your house to make sure that they comply with the weight restrictions. It's always very embarrassing when you get to the check-in desk, you stick your bag on and they say, that's too heavy, you're gonna have to take some stuff out. And you always see it, people are just sitting down on the airport floor, suitcases open, stuff going everywhere, they're trying to rummage, through. they're trying to get rid of the most heavy items, and it's just all a bit of a faff. And it's a situation that you can avoid if you are prepared. So make sure you've had a look online, see who you're flying with, look at your ticket specifically, at what your baggage allowance is, because it's not just dependent on the airline, but also you may have paid for a specific ticket which allows you a certain weight 
limit. So with your checked in luggage, it can be anything from 15 kgs to 30 kgs. Hand luggage, they can get really strict. A lot of airlines say that your hand luggage can't be over seven kilograms, which sucks a lot because actually when you have a bag full of things that is the right size dimensions, it actually comes out quite a bit heavy. And you may get lucky. Some airlines don't weigh your hand luggage, but some of them do. And it's not really something that we can predict either. But what you can do is get yourself one of these baggage weighing scales so that you can weigh your luggage before you leave your house and you can prepare for these things before you go so that you're not sitting on the airport floor in an absolute kerfuffle trying to rearrange your luggage into something that fits the specifications of the airline. And number 10 is a lesson that I learned very recently and that is to make sure that if you can check in for your flight before you get to the airport, check in online. Now this is something that I never really used to be that bothered about, like sometimes I check in online beforehand, but if I forgot or if I just didn't do it, it didn't matter because I could always do it at the airport, right? Well, on one of my most recent flights, I forgot to check in online beforehand. So I thought, that's fine, I'll check in when I get to the airport. It was an EasyJet flight, I've flown with EasyJet a million times, I've done it this way before, but when I got to the airport, two hours before I got to the airport, they said, the flight is overbooked and you're not definitely getting on and you're the third space reserve. I was like, really? I naively just kind of thought that it was always a guarantee that you're gonna get on a flight that you've booked. Well, this is not the case. So I have learned in the future that I am always gonna check in online before I get to the airport, if I can, to avoid an overbooked flight and being bumped off. Yes, you may get compensation if you don't make it onto that flight, however, that's very annoying. Most people have quite set travel plans, you know, like you've taken time off work, you've got the hotel booking, you've got like this time in your holiday. You don't wanna to have to be switching up your flights. So learn from my mistake. Make sure you always check in online before you get to the airport if you can. It's not always possible with an airline, but if you can, try to do it. And the final tip number 11, this goes for wherever you are traveling in the world. Travel with an open mind. This is so important. Things are not always gonna go to plan. They're not always gonna go smoothly. You're gonna meet people who are very different from you. The customs are gonna be different. The culture's gonna be different. Their way of life is gonna be different. And I've seen so many travelers who don't travel with an open mind. And not only do they end up getting quite frustrated, they feel like the world is against them. They also are potentially disrespectful in the place that they're in. So no matter what happens, please just try to remember to travel with an open mind, be open to new experiences, new opportunities. And this is the golden way to ensure that you are going to have the best time on your trip and come away with such a better experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and perhaps learned something new. I hope you enjoy your trip wherever it is that you are going. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye.